All right, this infinite series, this is what we call a geometric series. And we're going to determine uh, what values of R make this converge or diverge. Now, before I uh, actually get into that, I just want to um, have you consider a couple of examples uh, that will come up at the end. Let's say that R is a half. That's R to the 1 equals a half, so R to the 0 is 1. R squared is a fourth. R cubed um, is an eighth. R to the fourth is a sixteenth. You can see that it's getting smaller. Um, I would say that R is equal to two. Again, R to the zero will be one. But R squared will be four. R cubed will be eight r to the fourth will be 16. So what this, what this is saying is that, uh, what I, or what I'm trying to show you here, is that the limit as n approaches infinity of r to the n um, it equals 0 if r oops, is between negative 1 and 1. Um, at first, you may want to just see, say, okay, let's look at it between zero. So a fraction or some number, some number between zero and one, this sort of thing happens, it goes to zero. Um, now with negatives, it might not be as apparent, but this is the case. Uh, but they, you can't get uh, past like that, okay. Now, um, and it equals infinity if it's not the case that you're in this little interval here. Um, so, okay. So I think that's that hits the point, gets the point well enough for later. Okay, now we can't uh, compare this to uh, an improper integral because the antiderivative uh, does exist, uh, but it's a little, a little more tricky. So we're going to investigate this in another way. Okay. Um, so from the sigma sums advanced, uh, let's see, n equals that to Let's see, let's say to k here. Um, now you found that, so sigma sums advanced problem five. Um, that one, you um, looking at something like this. Um, so it's okay there. Uh, maybe it was an R, probably an R. Let me put the R back in. Let's use, it an, use an R. We like the R's there. Capital R. Eh, I don't know. It's, maybe I should go with the K. Already got already using an R there. All right. So you found that this was R. minus 1 minus r to the k plus 1. Oh, that's right. That's what you guys used was the capital N. Anyway, this will work. Um, 1 minus r. 1 minus r. OK. All right, so now, depending on how well you did on that assignment, you may or may not see why this is the case. OK, um, I, can, I can prove this to you uh, in another way. Um, let's rewrite r to the 0 as 1. Um, and now it's kind of circular reasoning, but in any case, I won't, uh, I'll start, now if we put the 1 minus r here, uh, 
uh, then we can actually prove this result. This will only work if uh, r is not equal to 1. Um, any, in any case, let's try this out. Let's see, 1 minus r, you got uh, 1 plus r plus r squared plus uh, r cubed plus it's r to the k minus 1 plus r to the k. And if you don't quite get everything that I'm doing here, not a big deal. It's not doesn't really matter. Just, um, so we'll do a distributive property. So you got 1 times 1, 1 times all those things. You got 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the k minus 1 plus r to the k. And then negative r times each of those. So um, let me write that here. So you got negative r minus r times r minus r times r squared minus r times r cubed minus, minus r times r to the k minus 1 minus r times r to the k. All right. OK. All right, so 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the k minus 1 plus r to the k. All right, and let me move, I'm going to move these things down here like this. So you got minus r. Notice this is minus r squared. This is minus r cubed. I could put that uh, r to the fourth in there, but I just want to be consistent with what we've got here. So, okay, so think of what we, oh, uh, okay, so let's see. Um, minus r to the Minus 1, minus r to the k, and then minus r to the k plus 1. k plus 1, right? If you think r to the 1, adding the exponents, you get something like this. Notice that all these will cancel along here, and we're left with 1 minus r to the k plus 1. All right, so we found that this was equal to 1 minus r k plus 1. So if r is not equal to 1, we can divide both sides by 1 minus r. And we get the formula so this is the sum from n equals 0 to k r to the n. Okay, so okay, so now just looking at this side here, uh, this part here, think about what happens if I was to say, okay, uh, so n equals 0 to infinity, r to the n. Think about how that is actually um, the limit as n approaches infinity as k approaches infinity. There we go. k approaches infinity of r to the n. Because we're, this thing is this finite sum. But if you look at it, what happens as k grows to infinity, it becomes the infinite sum. Well, this is just that right hand side. This is the limit as k approaches infinity of 1 minus r to the k plus 1 
over 1 minus r. Now, if this part kind of bothers you here, don't worry about it too much. Let's just uh, If you're a math major and you want to talk about it, come to my office. We can talk. Send me an email. Let's talk about it. If you're an engineer, you don't care, that's okay. No big deal. If you're an engineer and you care, even better. No big deal. Either way. All right, so let's see. Um, okay, now let's focus on this uh, limit here. Uh, this is this limit. Now think about what happens if r is is like between zero and one, right? Here's that thing I was talking about right at the beginning. Uh, if if r is a, a number between zero and one. Uh, as k approaches infinity, we just get bigger and bigger powers. So, um, and the same is true for uh, zero and for um, between negative between negative one and zero. So, um, this thing equals one over one minus r if r is between negative one and one. And it diverges. Ah, comic relief. It uh, narrows in on a number, an actual number, uh, if r is between negative 1 and 1. So it converges to that number there. Uh, and it diverges otherwise. All right, so that's the formula for a geometric series.